What's up everybody? It's Michaela. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have my marine biology book collection for you guys. So I have quite a hefty stack. Let's measure it. This tall-ish of books. So all of these are either from Amazon, local bookstores, or like aquariums, or the Whale Museum down in Friday Harbor. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy and let's dive in. Usually all of my books are kept in a little like stacked formation on my windowsill, but for the purpose of the video, I brought them all over here. But I'm gonna start with the current book that I'm reading and it is Return of the Sea Otter by Tom McLeish. I got this at the Monterey Bay Aquarium and I am a little over halfway through. So this talks about sea otters all the way from Alaska down to California. And I really enjoy this book so far. It's a pretty quick read and I really like it because a couple people that are mentioned in here are actually people that either I've heard of or my friend has even worked with one of the professors or doctors uh, research or researchers mentioned in this book. So. This is a really cool one. This is the only sea otter book I have actually. Now I'm just gonna go down based on how they're stacked. So the next book is Whales, Their Biology and Behavior. This is from Amazon. I haven't fully read through it yet, but it talks about sonar, like literally everything, their diet, their social aspect, everything. And I really like this book because it has really cool figures and really cool pictures in it. But I think this, besides my sea otter book, this is the newest book to my collection. Next, I have talked about this book a couple times on my channel and it is Death at Sea World by David Kirby. So I read this book, it took me a long time. This is a very thick book, but it took me a long time to read, but I finally got through it. I need to do like a whole video just on this book because it's a lot to dive into. It's a lot to dig in. So give this video a thumbs up if you guys want a book review on this. I'm very passionate about killer whale captivity. So let me know. It coincides with Blackfish. So if you read this, you should watch Blackfish. And if you watched Blackfish, you should also read this. Next is the Guide to Marine Mammals of the World. This is a marine mammologist Bible. This is my holy grail. I think this is, I don't know what edition this is, but I think this is the most accurate and most current. Maybe there's one or two marine mammal species that aren't in here, but this is so amazing. It has every marine mammal you can think of and it has the basic like info, the range and everything. So they have a whale section, they have a pinniped section. Every single marine mammal you can think of is in here and this is why it is a marine mammologist's Bible. Holy grail right here. The next book I actually haven't read yet, but I bought it off of a thrift store, like book store website, and it is Namu Quest for the Killer Whale by Ted Griffin. And fun fact, my copy is actually signed by Ted Griffin. I don't know how many copies he signed. I don't know how many signed copies exist, but I haven't read this yet, but I think it is so cool that it is signed by the author. Obviously, it is not made out to me but I'm very excited to dive into this book as well. I have a very bad habit of buying books when I haven't finished reading the books I already have. So some of these books I have not read yet, but we're gonna get there. My next book is from the Whale Museum and it is called Listening to Whales by Alexandra Morton. I have not read this one either. However, I have heard just so many amazing things about this book and I'm very excited. It's about research about killer whales, so I'm very excited to dive into this. The next book is Endangered Orcas, The Story of the Southern Residents. I've read 85% of this book. I kind of skipped around when I first got it, but it is by Monica Shields. I love this book so, so much. The Southern Residents, if you guys didn't know, hold such a deep and meaningful place in my heart. I'm very passionate about saving them and saving their wild salmon. Um, pray and I just really really I don't even know how to word it but this book has a really deep place in my heart and I recommend if you want to learn anything about the southern resident killer whales you start with this book it has 
everything you could possibly imagine about them in a 388 page book. The next book is Togetherness is Our Home and Orca's Journey Through Life. I'm pretty sure this is a fictional book but kind of based on like true events. Honestly I haven't read this one. This is the one I'm kind of like least excited to read. I don't know. I got it as a gift so I haven't read it yet but I think over the summer I'm definitely going to take time and read it. It's also a pretty hefty book. It's over 390 pages and the pages are like pretty long. So this is a very hefty book that is going to take a lot out of me to read. But being honest, this is the book I am the least excited to read out of my collection. <laughs> the next book is a marine biologist bible and holy grail and it is Ocean Anatomy by Julia Rothman. So this book is very very easy to understand and interpret. It is so cute, like look at this illustration of kelp forests. So it's very child friendly. She has a whole series of like blank anatomy so she has one on like bugs and the whole like every animal you can imagine i really really enjoy this like i said very easy to read here's the great barrier reef so i have not sat down and like read page by page all the way through but i have pretty much read three-fourths of this book just i'm bored and i open a couple pages and i read it but it's like anatomy of a snail anatomy of a scallop and this is amazing for all of the younger people in your life if they are interested in the ocean. I highly recommend this book. We're about halfway through. The next book is King of Fish, The Thousand Year Run of Salmon. This is another salmon book. My friend Molly recommended it to me and I loved this book so much. It just blew me out of the water because it was just so well written. I really, really liked this book. It has a lot of information on the salmon run and how they work. So if you're interested in learning about that, I definitely recommend reading this book. The next book is also a salmon book and it is called Salmon, People, and Place a Biologist Search for Salmon Recovery. If I'm gonna be honest, the first two chapters did not wow me. So I haven't read past that. I bought this on Amazon because it was recommended to me by a friend. First off, it came damaged. But that's not the author's fault, that's Amazon's fault, so I'm coming at you for this, Amazon. I don't like my books damaged. But talking back to the book, this book is a lot about salmon culture and what we as humans and our culture can do to help salmon. So if you're into the humanities side of marine biology, I definitely think you would enjoy this book. I just need to crack down, get through the first two chapters again and finish it, because I do want to finish it. Look at the cover. The cover is just, it's so cute. I love bears. Second to whales, bears are like my second favorite animals. But you know, I don't really know what this is about. I can't really tell you much about it because I haven't really read it. But based on the first two chapters, it's a lot about the humanities side of salmon conservation. The next book is What You Should Know About Sharks by Ocean Ramsey. I read this over quarantine. Very, very easy book to read. The pages are not very long. This book itself isn't very long. It's like 238 pages. I really liked this book. It gives a lot of good information on what you should do if you encounter sharks and what you should do if you're near one and to not do if you're near one. So this is a very nonfiction book. I really liked it. It has some pretty cool pictures in it. Her photography and her husband, I think her husband. His photography, also very amazing. I recommend this book if you're super into sharks. I bought it because I followed Ocean Ramsey on Instagram and it was finally on sale on Amazon, so I decided to buy it. But I like this book. I recommend it to any shark lover. What a surprise, another killer whale book. This is Puget Sound, Whales for Sale, The Fight to End Orca Hunting. This is another book I love. This is one of my favorite books of all time and it is all about the famous Pen Cove captures and it it's a very sad book but it teaches you so much. It teaches you the dark side of killer whale captivity and how it got started and how the industry kind of started. I highly recommend this book. If you want to learn more about the Southern Residents, it focuses on the whales of the Puget Sound, the Southern Resident killer whales, and how the Pen Cove captures affects the Southern Residents today. So I highly recommend this. This is probably my second book, my second favorite book in my collection. I could not recommend it enough. And 
another killer whale book. This is A Puget Sound Orca in Captivity, The Fight to Bring Lolita Home. I read this in a two hour flight from Juneau to Seattle. It is very easy to read. It's like 154 pages. There's amazing photographs in this book and it is just amazing. And the retiring Lolita, which brings me so much happiness. I'm a little hesitant on where she's gonna go, but it's a step in the right direction. I highly recommend reading this and educating yourself on Lolita. It is a very sad situation. I'm gonna kind of speed through the rest because my battery is dying. My next book, My Friend Let Me Borrow, but I haven't read it yet. It's Why Fish Don't Exist. Um, she said it's a very odd book, so I, I really need to read it and give it back to her. I haven't read this yet, but it's a part of my collection as of right now. The next couple books are kind of field guides. So this is Guide to the Manta and Devil Rays of the World. I bought this off of some website that was selling it. If I can find it, I'll link it down below. But I love this. It's a field guide, so it talks about the rays and devil rays, the manta and devil rays of the world. So it's a lot like the marine mammal one. I really liked this. It has really pretty pictures. I'm drawn to books that have really pretty pictures and graphs, but I love manta rays and stingrays and devil rays, so I highly recommend this if you do too. Next is very, very similar. It's just a pocket guide to sharks of the world. So same thing as the last one, a lot of pretty pictures. It's meant to be used as a field guide to identify some sharks in the wild, so it just has like a bunch of like ID stuff. Highly recommend this. It's super small. Like here's my hand. This one is an amazing field guide because it literally you can just like toss it in your bag. So I recommend this if you want to educate yourself more on sharks or if you just love sharks in general. This is my last pocket guide but it is an illustrated guide to the Pacific Coast Tide Pools. And this one is so small. Like it's even smaller than my shark one. But it is, this is the cutest little field guide. It just talks about like starfish and everything that you see in tide pools. It is so, so cute. I love this book. I bought it just because when I moved up here, I got really passionate about the animals in tide pools. So I wanted to learn more about them. And I have taken this out to tide pools and I deed them. This isn't something that I would sit and like read through, but it's something that like if I found a crab, I would like pull up the arthropod section and ID a crab. So if you live anywhere near Pacific Coast Tide Pools or you just want to learn more about the animals of the Pacific Coast Tide Pools, I highly recommend this book. And last but certainly not least, I literally bought this book because it was so cheap. It is A Whale of the Wild. This is a fiction book. I have read a little bit of it. Shit. It's such an easy read. Like it is definitely more geared towards children, not a marine biologist, but it's about Vega who is a young killer whale. So I've read probably about 75% of this. I have a really bad habit of reading like 75% of books and then being like, okay, I'm done. Like I'm bored, time to, for the next one. But I really like this. It was a really sweet story and it's a fiction one. So it's a little break from some really big science-y and non-fiction books. Those were all of the books that I have in my marine biology book collection. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any other books that you recommend I check out, please leave them in the comment section below because I'm always looking to expand my book collection. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.